Hey, what's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to the show. We got a lot of news, man. It seems like uh, it's coming out in the biker scene this week. And one of those things I want to talk about is these damn idiots targeting motorcycles. Uh, we got a story coming up about a hit and run in uh, Wisconsin, as you know. In Wisconsin, there was that one guy that hit that couple because he said, Hey, they must be racist if they're uh, riding motorcycles. And now this incident. Bikers in this environment right now are being targeted. And everybody has to be on their guard now. If this is happening in Wisconsin, I'm sure it's going to start happening all over the country. And being a biker, don't let them get away with it. Start knocking the hell out of these freaking people, man. Don't sit back and let the cops do it. If you're being threatened, hit first. Then talk. After it's all done and they're laying in a pool of blood. Because it is really enough is enough. I got a story coming out and I'm sure everybody heard about it. In Portland, they drugged that guy out of uh, his truck. He didn't make it. It is now time to fight back. No more of this crap worried about, hey, you know, he's a race. You know what? I can give a damn what I'm called. But when you start targeting bikers... Oh, yeah, I'm going to say something about it. Going to say something about it. And apart from the show, when it comes to the street, and if that stuff happens, lay it down, man. You know, for those that have concealed carry the uh, license, well, what I can suggest is, if there's more than two, put good use to that CCW. Because that's the only thing that they understand, is pushback. It's just like uh, the Middle East Wars. The only thing they understand is strength. People are so scared. And it's pretty unbelievable that there's a segment of the biker community also that's afraid to speak out. That's afraid to push back against these people. For as long as this thing started, I would say, and I actually did a segment on this. Where are the so-called three percenters? You know, the ones that use the Punisher mask and they use uh, the flag, the don't tread on me flag. Where were they at the start? This is the events that everything they were supposed to be about happened. Instead, what do we see? Nothing but Facebook posts. Nothing about YouTube videos. No action. No pushback. And people are getting hurt. Why? Because they are afraid of being called a racist. That's why they won't do anything. Last time I checked... In America, you had a right to defend yourself. And when I seen this story in Wisconsin, it was a hit and run. And it took about five minutes of them being on the ground for anybody deciding to stop to help them. And they feel they were targeted. Which to me is very plausible after that one incident. Now, we all seen that video from Sturges. Even though it was cool to see him yelling back and stuff, one thing I do not understand is why nobody just went up to that freaking idiot in the purple hair and knocked the hell out of him. Sure, 
You're gonna do some time in the joint in the jail. It's not like they're gonna send you to prison. But it proves a point. Now the little assholes are trying to get Sturges, you know, discontinued, which is never gonna happen. Too much money into it. That's how stupid they are. But now they're gonna think that they can show up again. Because to them, they gotta win. They stood in the middle of Main Street and got to shout out their stupid crap. It wasn't until the dude kicked at that motorcycle that people went on them, but the cops, they swarmed them. So nobody could get at them. And I'm sitting here thinking, hmm, there's a bunch of bikers there, a couple cops. What's stopping you? If you're as patriotic as you say you are, then it's time to put the boots down, man. Start stomping. Because that's the only thing these people are ever going to realize. Over 80 days of stuff going on in Portland. 80 days. I know, uh... The PBs are out there now. They're out there showing what's up. Some of the even bikers for Trump are out there showing what's up. Which is pretty freaking sad that them guys are out there doing it. When it's like, damn man, we got all this we can, you know, really push back. You know, the feds were always worried about bikers. Why? Because we were organized. Are their fears misplaced? You got to ask yourself that. Yeah, there's been a lot of bikers defending statues and all that good stuff. But the one chance they had in Sturges, nothing. What, follow them out of town? In the old days, you'd be, uh, you know, sitting on the corner, drinking a beer, waiting for them to get out of the joint. Next thing you know, you follow them down the road and oops! That's just the way it used to be. And maybe I'm just kind of freaking finicky on this segment because a biker went down with his wife, his old lady. It was intentional, according to them. I'll present the story. You decide. Another thing that's got me going besides this deal is the military is coming out with uh, their gang assessment stuff. Which is ridiculous. Motorcycle gangs and how they're infiltrating the service. Last time I checked, a lot of damn veterans of motorcycle clubs served. And served proudly for their country. But now, all of a sudden, well, it's a risk assessment. Bikers are white nationalists. What do you call these BLM freaking uh, schlucks? What do you call them? What do you call the Panthers? You don't call them nothing because you're scared. You got a media that has divided this country so bad. Where people don't even want to tell you who they support because they're afraid. Why? This is the United States. Why should you be afraid? The minute you're afraid, you deserve to lose your freedom. That's what I have to say on that subject. Uh, let's go into the news. Uh, talk about that. See the story. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget, pound rock on, baby. It's been a while since we did any biker news from overseas over in Europe. Weekend Fire marks third blaze in three years linked to an alleged local Hells Angel member, Dale Carruthers. 
and this was just posted uh, 23 hours ago. Rock on. Investigators are probing a third suspected arson in the past three years at a home linked to the founder of the London Hells Angels chapter. London Police and Ontario Fire Marshal's Office are investigating a blaze that broke out Sunday around 3.40 a.m. Dude, I kind of feel stupid right now. This ain't Europe. This is Canada. Ontario. You know what? Why you got to confuse Hollywood? London Free Press, man. You usually say London Free Press, you're thinking England. You guys are confused up north and you just confused the hell out of me. Retraction. This is from up north. Property records show the two-story house is owned by uh, Salvatrice and uh, Domenico Barletta. The records uh, list the owner's mailing address. Uh, I'm not going to say that one. The address of the Beef Baron, which is operated by Vincent, the brother of the alleged Hells Angels member, Robert. Uh... Sale, who is believed to be the mother of Vincent and Robert, also owned a Blue Mountains vacation property that was destroyed in a suspected arson more than two years ago. Well, maybe it's not making money. Uh, they decided just stay. You know, light the place up. The January 5th, 2018 fire in Thornberry, a small town on Georgia Bay, northwest of Collinwood, prompted police to launch Operation Hobart. <laughs> All these freaking operational names. An investigation into an alleged multi-million dollar gambling operation that police contend was run by members of the Hells Angels, an alleged Toronto crime family. Robert is one of 28 people charged with bookmaking. What's wrong with making a couple bets? Oh, yeah, because they don't get their money, their taxes. That's why they charge you with tax evasion. And weapons offenses after a December police sweep that led to the seizure of the guns, cash, vehicles, and several high-end houses. Days after, Barletta, 50, was arrested aboard an airplane at Toronto's Pearson's International Airport on December 13th, 2019. A commissioner's road home owned by... Uh, yeah, we're not going to even go there. Hmm. Hi, what is it? Habiba? <laughs> it's like a bish. Oh my goodness, he is my cousin. Who is also charged in Operation Hobart was gutted in a suspected arson. Sources have linked her to Barletta. Nobody has been charged in either of the blazes, both of which remain under investigation. He previously, Barletta, owned a, a Flesh Gordon's, or Flesh Gordon, I like it, it's like Flash Gordon, but Flesh Gordon's. Now, that is cool, okay? You gotta give him some dibs on the name. Uh, strip Club on Dundas Street before the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario yanked his liquor license in 2014 because of his outlaw motorcycle gang ties. You know, that's such bogus, man. Just because you have a ties to a club, next thing you know, they're taking away your livelihood, and then they wonder why all these damn fires are starting. Just saying. The East End Strip Club was set on fire in 2012, allegedly during a battle with uh, the Hells Angels and a rival street gang. No charges were laid in the fire. So basically, they got nothing. Nada. Zilch. I still say that's bogus with the London Free Press, man. I thought it was frickin' England, you schlucks. Anyway, let's go over to the Paragold uh, Daily Press. The Smokin' Skulls Motorcycle Club has scheduled its ninth annual Ride for Knowledge Skills Challenge for Saturday, August 22nd. The ride starts at the Smoking Skulls Clubhouse located at 320 South 2nd Avenue in Paragold. With the first bike out at noon, a bag of school supplies or a $10 donation per hand is required. There will be live music featuring Irish Red and a live auction. Food is also available. 
You can find out more information on the Smoking Skulls MC Facebook. Now, here was what I was telling you about with the military. You know what? I love my military. You know, both men and women, they're awesome. They serve this country. You know, but them damn officers, man. Military.com. Army street gang activity is increasing internal report shows. Then they got a picture of the Mongols vest. Uh, the most recent report from the Army on street and outlaw motorcycle gang activity in the ranks shows both trending upward while incidents of domestic extremism remain roughly consistent. An internal report obtained by Military.com through the Freedom of Information Act. I'm surprised you were able to get it from them. They still haven't released the UFO stuff. They're hiding it on us. Shows that gang members were tied to dozens of Army felony law enforcement reports and more than 100 criminal investigations in fiscal 2018, the latest year for which the data is available. While these reports and investigations make up less than 1% of all Army law enforcement incidents, the new report shows that the little-discussed problem of military gang activity continues to be a headache for base commanders and other service uh, leaders. Interesting. Uh, the gang and domestic extremist activity threat assessment from the Army Criminal Investigation Command, or CID, is a regular report compiled at the behest of Congress. Yeah, like anybody who likes them people. They, you know what? They should freaking be investigating every one of them schlucks. In fiscal 2018, the report found 83 law enforcement reports across the military with known or suspected gang or domestic extremist member involvement, a 66 increase. That's very interesting. Why do I say it's very interesting? Because what's going on in this country right now? People always say, oh, there'll never be another civil war. We'll go, the military are going and crush them. That's assuming that you got at least 50% of the military on your side. And a 66% in, uh, percent increase? That's showing you it's not all uh, hunky-dory in the military right now with the way people are thinking. So you got to say, well, what if this pops off? Will you get some of the military going on this side? Which, uh, you know, you will. Just saying. Uh, the data shows that the gang LERs are steadily increasing each fiscal year. Well, that increase holds true across categories. Street gang activity shows a 68% year-over-year increase from 38 to 64 incidences, while outlaw motorcycle gangs had a 60% increase from 10 to 16 incidences. Really, you put a picture of the Mongols patch on your website, and there's only been 16 incidences out of the whole damn army? <laughs> My god. I never thought military.com would get just like, uh, well, they're actually reporting the, the figures, but to make it sound like it's a real big deal, 10 to 16 incidences? Come on. Uh, the report does not offer reasons or explanations for those increases. It does offer some insights into current gang trends. Gang members increasingly communicate with each other on social media platforms ranging from Snapchat to TikTok and have become more diverse with female gang associates serving in increasingly active roles in gang-related crime. Neighborhood I came from, the women were just as badass as the men were. Uh, they're also becoming less centralized. The report cites the Tex... Oh, yeah, right. Here you want to get them. Texas Department of Public Safety saying that, quote, many young gang members are relinquishing traditional gang structure and rules, opting for less organizational oversight and the freedom to serve in roles of self-interest. I doubt that. I doubt that a lot. In the Army, the gang-related crime investigation ran the gauntlet from murder to absences without leave. In suspect, uh, some cases, 
the suspected gang member was the actually the victim in the crime. Hmm. So, again, let's get to the OMG stuff, as they say. OMGs, which had a 33% increase in overall violent activity from 2017 to 2018, saw the most Army-connected activity in Texas. Eight of 16 total OMG uh, incidents tracked by the Army took place at Fort Bliss and Fort Hood, with popular clubs including the... Uh, Banditos, Kazakhs, Kinfolk, Mongols, Outcasts, and Thug Riders. In the OMG investigations, nine active uh, duty soldiers were identified. Quote, the Army is concerned about soldiers who join o o OMGs or their support clubs because they typically join these groups after they have been in the military for several years are of higher rank, are, are more mature, and tend to be leaders, informal or formal, who can influence younger soldiers. The report states these soldiers are more likely aware of DOD policy regarding membership in criminal organizations. Again, you can read the, uh, the rest of the report because it just really goes on and on. On uh, military.com, uh, Army Street Gang activity is increasing. That is the headline. Now, let's go over to one of the main stories I was talking about in my opening. Portland, man beaten probably to death in the street by Antifa as the Attorney General continues to do nothing at all. I really do feel for you people that live on the West Coast, man, because something wrong with you. Something's really wrong with the way you elect your leaders, you back them, and this is what you get. My God. Andrew Eglin, there are a few things in the universe more dangerous than a completely unhinged and unaccountable mob of agitated people in mass. Cowards. Cowards. This week, the mob in Portland attacked a man who had just crashed his car he crashed because they were blocking the street, and they claimed that he was trying to run them over. I would hit the gas, hit a couple of them, put them over the windshield. Crap, put them through the windshield if you ask me. There's no video of the crash itself, but there is a video of part of the beating, and there is video of a woman who was in the car with him crying, and there's footage of him laying on the ground bleeding from his skull. No cops, huh? Oh, wait! You wanted them defunded. The bone in the back of his head appears to be smashed in, and if he survived, he's going to have serious brain damage. And I do believe that he passed away. Unfreaking real. More of my uh, closing. Uh, let's go over to Cleveland, the 19. We covered this story Hell's Angels, Mongol shooting, and stabbing video. From Valley View Gas Station has been released. Uh, it was released by the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Uh, the video is blurred where two bodies are laying on the ground. One uh, a Mago and one a member of the Hells Angels. Uh, the Hells Angels member, 53-year-old John Fuller of Northeast Ohio, would later die after being shot. The accusation, according to the investigator, is Fuller stabbed the Mongol member in the neck and the head near the gas pumps. The biological brother of the Mongol, who is also a member of the biker club, saw the attack and shot Fuller. The stabbing victim survived, but authorities have not released their identity. In the police video, the accused shooter was ordered to his knees at gunpoint by a responding officer. The video showed the man complied with search and a gun was placed on the hood of the officer's car as evidence. The shooter was detained at the scene but released that night as the investigation into whether or not it was self-defense shooting continues. According to a source on the matter, it is known that Ohio is Hell's Angel territory. Uh, I'd have to disagree with you there, but, uh, and the Mongols do not have a chapter there. Both the shooter and his brother, who was stabbed, both live in Northeast Ohio. I'll take you a little bit through this uh, video real quick, see what it has to say here. Okay, there we go. 
this is just showing a cop car arriving on the scene. Uh, yeah, it's taking forever. It's like a freaking two hour and 30 minute video. Uh, www.cleveland19.com. Uh, there you just start seeing the cop, uh, where the bodies were laying. It's on the, the farthest pump, uh, that you can see. What else can we got here? I uh, basically what's going on they got him on the ground uh, they got the scene taped off and they're basically going through the motions right now again it's two hours and 30 minutes you guys can go ahead and uh, check it out uh, cleveland19.com Els Angels Mongol Shooting Stabbing uh, Video Valley View Gas Station released is the uh, title of the article. Now, here's the one that got me uh, going. We were targeted. Shoy Boygan uh, motorcyclists seek driver in hit and run on I-43 in Milwaukee. Let's see what they have to say. Of a Sheboygan couple wants your help solving a hit and run crash. My God, they want you to see find that the video? Who hit them in Milwaukee last week, causing major scrapes and broken bones? Brett Lemoyne is live near I-43. Yep, I he ran North right up Avenue on him. With the evidence that shows the moment of impact, Brett. Yeah, Ted, this couple uh, was hit and they crashed both of their Harleys last week. Now they're taking the investigation into their own hands, showing us this horrific video. Both of the victims still bruised and battered. Two Harleys wiping out on I-43 did it on purpose Avenue last Tuesday. Investigators call it a hit and run crash. You Kevin see the both bikes go down. Man, is he looking messed to prove up? It may have been something worse. It looks like we were targeted. This married couple of 11 years are avid motorcycle riders. On their way home to Sheboygan after dinner, they say they were struck by what appears to be a sedan. First seen speeding up behind them on this DOT footage. Just about made it to Line and Google's brewery on the freeway, and I heard a, a, a scream, and my wife's bike was in a slide. The couple believes this driver just wanted to hit them to see them fall. You're damn Dilster right, he did. also went down, rolling about 30 feet before having to crawl out of traffic. I have a compound fracture in my right leg. I have an orbital fracture to my skull. The couple says both of their bikes are totaled. The pants Gilster was wearing helped demonstrate just how painful it was. It was almost five minutes before we finally got somebody to stop for us. While the sheriff's office investigates, Murtis hopes this DOT video and the couple's story will jog some memories of drivers who were also out that night. Help. I mean, that's, that's all I was looking for is help. Help catch the person that did it, hold them responsible. Now, when they're both recovered, the couple says they will continue to ride again. There you go. Get the back Milwaukee on that horse. The Sheriff's Office is still investigating. If you have any information about this crash, you're asked to give them a call. Reporting live in Milwaukee. Well, hopefully they get the uh, license plate number from the cameras and stuff. But here's what I'm talking about. That was intentional. You've seen it. Bikers are being targeted up in Wisconsin. There's some stuff, I guess, I'm hearing up in Mich Michigan as well. More of my final thoughts on that one. Now, let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Off-duty Seattle officer arrested for, guess what? Domestic violence assault. <laughs> as usual. Uh, by Como News Staff. An off-duty Seattle police officer is facing charges after she was, oh, she was, arrested late Sunday night for a domestic violence assault. Man, these are going on all over the country with these women. Uh, <laughs> the county sheriff's office told the Seattle Police Department of the officer's arrest. Police said she was booked into the uh, county jail for misdemeanor domestic violence assault. The officer was hired by the Seattle Police Department in January. Uh, they don't give, uh, her name, but hey, <laughs> you're in a wall of shame, whoever the hell you are. <laughs> Let's go to another one. Uh, San Antonio law enforcement officers, uh, arrested so far this year, 13 of them, 13 law enforcement agents in the San Antonio area have been arrested. 
The men worked for various police departments, Bexar County, United States Border Patrol, United States Marshal Service. Their alleged offenses range from possession of child pornography, go figure, to intoxicated uh, manslaughter. Oh, we got a bunch of them here. Uh, San Antonio police officer Austin Wilkie, 33, was arrested and charged with assaulting his spouse. Then we got another one here, a border agent, Alan Cox, 24, uh, <laughs> solicitation of a minor with intent to meet sexual contact. My God, you sick bastard. Uh, a United States deputy marshal uh, was arrested for intoxicated manslaughter and unlawful carry after allegedly hitting and killing a 23-year-old Taylor McCowan. Uh, he was uh, uh, hit by McCowan's sedan head-on while driving the wrong way. Here's another one. Paul Garza arrested and charged. I love this, man. We get more uh, wall of shamers just by one article. With assault and his spouse. Hey, I thought... How many club members were arrested during this time period in the same area? I wonder. Very interesting. Uh, an officer, Sebastian Torres, 25, was arrested and charged with possession and distribution of obscene images depicting child uh, sexual abuse. <laughs> Great. And these are the idiots that uh, protect and serve. Uh, it just goes on. Uh, 37, uh, Chris uh, Yarbra. 37, charged with two counts of possessing child pornography, one count of obscene wholesale promotion with deviant sexual acts. Oh, come on, man. And it just goes and goes. This is a good one, Corey. Just goes. Let me show the pictures over there. Goes, 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 man. Holy cow. Yep. 13 so far and it's only august right now so we'll have to see how it ends by the end of the year how many of you guys get uh busted out there man i love it when uh, these prove my points about them being hypocrites here here from beggar syndicate cycles just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market apparel that's based all upon bikers baggers and brotherhood and ladies we didn't forget about you either between tank tops and baby doll tees we have it all now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Well, that was a first. Usually over on YouTube and Facebook, I'll show them a screen where I'm actually reading the articles for them. So that way they can see what I'm talking about. Boy, I've been so upset that I missed that damn screen and just went through the whole show with my studio uh, set uh, camera angle and all that good stuff. And I think I did you if you guys seen the video and I uh, I'm going to put the link in the description box so you can see the video and you'll be pissed off too. You seen it was intentional. He went for the rear bike, then the front bike. And I hope to God they got a license plate. But seeing that kind of stuff is like, you know what? Enough's enough. They wouldn't have done this stuff in the 80s and 90s. No, a biker would have got off that bike and beat the piss out of these kids. They'd have got a ball bat or a hammer or some knuckles and just took it down. Like I said at the beginning of this show, that's why I didn't understand why they didn't freaking wolf pack them. Why let them spew their crap? Screw their protest. Go out to Portland and try to protest, and next thing you know, you're getting beat. One good uh, turn deserves another, in my opinion. Hey, mainstream media, you wanted everybody divided? Well, you got them divided, don't you? Are you dividing them because you're trying a New World Order crap, or you're working for them? You know, you, you guys do work for Soros. I, you know, a lot of you pansies do. Or do you want it just for the ratings? But there are people dying now. Hope you guys can wake up and look in the mirror. Because you're pathetic. So you leave people like bikers no choice. They need to fight back and defend themselves now. Because now there is two incidences of two bikers being targeted in Wisconsin. One died, 
two were badly hurt. This is not acceptable. I say, don't wait around for the cops. Hell, a lot of the cops are probably saying, hey, do what you got to do. We're turning the other way. I've heard a lot of that going on in Chicago. Back in the hood, man, uh, none of the boys are letting any of them idiots come through the neighborhood. None of them. If, if they try, they get shot. That's the way it works. You know, a lot of people beef on street gangs, but one thing they know how to do is take care of that neighborhood. Well, at least Northside does. You know, I don't know about South and West Side. They just tear their shit up. But you ain't got any of them coming in the neighborhood because, you know what, they'll get mowed down real quick. So I think bikers might want to take a little, uh, you know, lesson from them. Don't let it happen. Stand tall. Hey, it's self-defense. You're not going to sit there and tell me nobody's going to believe you. Because they will. They see what's going on around this country. Stand tall, man. Stand tall. Uh, the other article that kind of had me peeved was that military.com one. Up from, uh, up to 16 from 10. Okay. So 16 out of the whole freaking army? And you're acting like it's a major problem? Maybe I'm reading it wrong. But it kind of sounds like propaganda against motorcycle clubs. And to take anything from Texas, you, you, you're screwed in the head, man. They'll inflate numbers just to do it. Texas is uh, like the epicenter of club profiling. But what do you guys think? 10 incidences to 16, and that's a big increase out of the whole U.S. military. Sickening stuff. And then they go and show the Mongols patch on their article. It's like, wait a second here. That's not the only thing you guys were talking about in this thing. So now, with that picture being there, it makes it as if that's what the Mongols do. The Mongols ain't into uh, domestic terrorism. They're not into that stuff. But your article makes it as so. The Mongols are mostly a Hispanic club. But you want to make them into extremists? Are you, you're kidding me, right? And the reason you do that is because you know damn well the citizens, regular citizens, don't know any better. And that's the problem with people nowadays. All they do is watch the news and believe every damn thing they see. They don't know how to read between the lines. The brainwash. Crap, our schools did that for us. And we let them. Believe it or not, all that it right now is happening started in the 1960s. Communism, Marxism, all that ideology started in the 60s real hardcore. They came to power, next thing you know, it's little more left, little more left, little more left. Then boom, this is happening. Because we let them into positions of authority. Teachers. Professors. It's nothing but cesspools in them freaking universities. Cesspools. And we don't sit our kids down and say, hey, that's not the way this works, man. That's not America. That's communism. And if you love it so damn much... Get your passport, buy you a ticket, and get the hell out of here. Go live in Russia for a couple months. See how you like it. Better yet, go live in North Korea. Where he just ordered families to kill their pets for meat. But hey, I thought uh, utopia is what communism was. What these little pricks believe in. 
Yeah, carrying around that old Soviet Union flag. Hey, everybody my age that grew up uh, during the Cold War, what do you think about that one? These little punks carrying around the Soviet Union flag. I guess they didn't know what it was like to live under the threat of the nuclear annihilation with both countries uh, pointing nuclear missiles at each other. Guess they didn't know that. But no, they start buying in this ideology. Crap, most of these protesters, uh, many of them that's been arrested have been teachers. What's that telling you? What's that telling you about us as parents making sure this doesn't happen? They just want sheep. And you know what? We're leading our uh, kids to the slaughter. Unfreaking real, if you ask me, man. Unfreaking real. Anyway, thanks for watching. Again, I'm sorry uh, over to YouTube and Facebook for that. I was just agitated, man. I forgot to freaking switch screens, let you guys read what I was going to read. Uh, but hey, you got a full freaking uh, radio show to see me do what I do, man. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit uh, Spotify or iTunes, listen to us on the radio, plug us in when you're on your ride and stuff. And you guys, you know what? Be real careful out there, man. Bikers are being associated with bikers for Trump. Scumbags, whatever you want to say about us. But that's who we're being associated with. And it's time, you know what? Carry some ball bearings in your pockets. Carry a freaking baseball bat or freaking us mini one. Shit, grab a mag light, man. That'd do a good damage going about 70 miles an hour. Oops! Falls out of my pocket right through a windshield. Is what it is, man. Protect yourselves. Always look around you. See what's going on around you. Be aware of your environment now. With that, guys, I'll talk to you later. Be careful. Be good. I'm I say goodbye, vamoose, adios, ciao, so long, get your hat. Yo, Yo you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, motorcycle rallies, and bikers helping the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all the baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.